the world destroyed by evil. Discover the epic origin story of the greatest team of heroes in the history of mystery. <laughs> Not bad. Nailed it. Hello to Jason Isaacs. It's wonderful uh, to nice. see you first today. First of the day. Very good. Is that the first one today? First of the day, yeah, amazing. I thought that's the only reason I came here. That's that's the interview wrapped up for me now. Oh, like done. so, that's thanks very life, much. Love you lifetime goal. I thought everybody would have been saying that, but sure, listen, there you go. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to chat to you today. Welcome to the Big Review Ski, and I wanted to, to I'm kind of wondering. Obviously, you've played uh, an incredible number of amazing bad guys throughout your career. You're excellent at it uh, through horror and fantasy and sci-fi and everything. But I was wondering, what was the appeal about Scoop where you're like, this is a lovely, fun, family-friendly film, and I'm determined to still be the absolute, well, nasty guy in the middle of it. I had to choose my words carefully, but nasty guy in the middle of all of that as well. I think you just asked and answered your own question. <laughs> just, uh, that's yeah. it that's it exactly <laughs> what you said there you go no actually the appeal was something you couldn't possibly guess which is that it's called scoop that's what i call my daughter we call our, uh, our daughter her name is ruby she was scooby when she was born and then it changed to scoop about a decade ago or more so when i saw and they said they asked you to be in uh, uh warner brothers asked me in a new film scoop i went yep that's it i said i don't need to know anything else they went, well it's the new scooby -Doo. well it doesn't matter What's the new Scooby Doo film? Oh shit! Really? That sounds great. And they said, "And you're playing Dick Dusty." He went, "No." So that was a bonus. Me. That was a bonus oh, afterwards. All the, bonus. So the fact it was called Scoob, I was in. Thank God it wasn't an instructional manual on how to assemble tractors or something. Um, and Dick Dusty, I grew up with, and I grew up with Scooby Doo too. When I was a kid, Saturday morning cartoons were the only children's programming apart from Blue Peter. And I would run downstairs, dive on the couch, and not move till lunchtime. And uh, the Scooby-Doo was in it, but the whole Hanna-Barbera universe was in there, including the Wacky Racers with Dick Dusterly and Muttley and the fabulous and gorgeous Penelope Pitstop, who was my first celebrity crush. Um, so, you know, there, it was a, it was a no-brainer. So yes. um, a multitude of, uh, it, it all just, a multitude of reasons, it all just came together perfectly. Um, I'm looking at this. Is... I'll be honest, I was anxious because he's a famous character and I grew up watching, I was thinking, I'm going to have to learn to do that voice. And I started watching the old ones on YouTube. Uh, and then uh, it became apparent earlier, they didn't hire me to do the old voice. They could have got someone to do that or a mimic. They wanted, they'd redrawn him, they reimagined him. Uh, they needed a different character to drive the narrative in a movie because a film is different from a 10 minute cartoon and you need a threat. And he's drawn, boy, is he a threat. He's a huge, hulking, square jawed brute of a man. He's the same pathetic, needy, whining vainglorious individual on the inside but he's a he's a different character on the outside well i was wondering did you relish delivering one of the funniest lines in my opinion anyway that i've ever heard in a kids movie and actually i wrote it down to try and uh, to get it right as well and it's just you saying your own name basically ah yes i am a I dick did. dick with a d <laughs> dick 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 and obviously you deliver it much better than i ever could oh please my friends call me dick okay Rick? No, I'm not a Rick. I'm a dick with a D. Rick with a D. Da 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 dick. Well, 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 Rick. Yeah, we did it hundreds of times because we we're having a very good time, also crying with laughter while we were doing it. The job it may not be apparent to an audience watching it. You don't meet each other, so the actors are never together in the same place. We're in different countries and different days, different times. I didn't meet any of them. Um, I was looking forward to meeting them at the premiere, but that never happened. Uh, but the person you're recording with is Tony Savoni, who wrote and directed it. He's, he knows what everyone else has done, so he's doing all the voices for you. And then he's just encouraging you, or he encouraged me, to improvise as much as possible, to go wildly off piste and to come up with crazy stuff. He's only going to use the stuff he likes. And you know you've hit the mother load if you can get him to snort with laughter, literally to spray snot. That will be the time that you'll use that. And when we were doing that sequence, we were having the best time, giggling like Beavis and Butthead. Is it, I know people always kind of ask the question, is it more fun to play a bad guy? But is there something, is there an additional layer in there when you know this is for, you know, there's a family, they're going to be sitting down the sofa, sitting together, it's Friday night, the mommy and daddy, the kids, whatever. And uh, and then you know, no, this, this one's for the parents because I'm going to crack them up. Is there an added layer of um, fun there? Yeah, well, that's all fun. Yeah. I mean, yes, of course there is. There's an added layer of fun. I remember doing Star Trek and slipping Easter eggs into the dialogue that, you know, nobody would be... A, you wouldn't know unless you told someone watch out for this and they watch it again 
And the same thing, yeah, of course. But that's one of the great things about doing this film, Scoob, that you know, it's going to work for kids who watch the adventure. It's going to work for teenagers who've got a bunch of references that I had no idea were even in there, with TikTok stuff and music stuff, people on the soundtrack. And then there's a bunch of uh, enjoyably adult things, not just rude things, but also just adult concepts and ideas about how people treat each other and behave. Um, that's the holy grail that everyone aims for when they make family films. How can you get the whole family in a room watching the same thing and getting something different out of it? And uh, hopefully it's worked. Definitely. And I was wondering, because for years it was things like Star Wars with these, you know, like, and Star Trek as well, these pop culture phenomena. But there's a few throwaway gags about Harry Potter in the middle of Scoob. And it's just become that kind of common part and said, oh, well, everyone's going to get a Harry Potter reference. Does that Tino might have started. It's full of, it's got lots of pop culture references in it. And it's an odd connection to draw between Scoob and, and Tarantino films. But, but, you know, referencing real things, referencing real life actors, there's a, there's a, Liam Hemsworth joke in it as well and there's a Netflix gag in it and this is there's a whole bunch of stuff that just makes it feel uh I don't know I'm so <laughs> sure my age if I even use the word cooler it's so terminally uncool but no think... makes it feel relevant is that a word that's a yeah rel- word he's in there too he is uh it was interesting to see him all right I was wondering over your career over the years um is there a secret especially when you come to something animated and everything's a little bit more exaggerated is there a secret a little to bit perf- more exaggerated a little bit <laughs> understate that yeah. um is there uh a secret to perfecting that kind of that belly evil laugh yeah <laughs> <laughs> Went on for about an hour too long, there. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, I'm laughing because Dick finds it funny. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that happens when you're acting that people think you, or maybe some actors, or I'm not, are, are constructing. Oh, I'll do this. I'll do this in my head. Or this, and I, I have no idea what's going on when I'm doing it. I'm, I'm trying to be the person caring about what they care about and getting rid of the obstacles in their way. And um, so, you know, the Emperor in The Dark Crystal, which I did recently for Netflix as well, had a very different laugh. But he had that laugh because he had that huge, long snout. Plus, he was dying of uh, emphysema or whatever. He had any kind of rotten lungs. And, and that was his laugh. And he was laughing out of fear. And Dick is laughing out of grandiosity and stuff. So I, I don't know. It's not technical, is my point. Point is, I lose myself in it. And uh, I've no idea what I've done when it's over. Is there a potential for a Wacky Races sequel, do you think? Well, there's the potential for they've all got my phone number. And whenever they call, I'll tell you what I am, which is I have this in common with every actor in the world. I am available. So, and I can work on a microphone much easier than I can work on a film set right now. So, yeah, I I love doing animated stuff and I would happily jump into any more that comes my way. Well, you might get to work along, uh, Pene- uh, alongside Penelope then, which would be yeah, a lifelong you go, we ambition. Maybe you don't meet any of these people. I didn't, didn't even meet Muttley. Oh, no, precious Muttley. Yeah. We were hoping, everyone was hoping to meet at, uh, at premieres and uh, glad about on red carpets. Uh, and instead, uh, I was standing in my, in my box room. With lots uh, of Scooby-Doo toys. Computer. With lots of Scooby-Doo merch that they sent me. Got I hope that. you get to hold on to that, do you? Uh, it will be donated to charity as soon as anyone will take it. But uh, okay. I've enjoyed the day that it's been here. Yeah, I'll send you my address. Perfect. Excellent. Okay, Jason, thank you very much for your time. Congrats thank on the film much. and we'll and, chat to uh, you soon. You've got my address. Uh, I'd like that Irish passport as soon as possible. Oh, geez. Good luck to you. I know we'll more than uh, welcome over here. Like, we'll definitely have you. Hello? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shaggy and Scooby were taken? Do you realize where we are? No. Look around, man. The clean, modern aesthetic, the cool blue color palette. We're in Ikea. the Falcon Fury. Did you say Ikea? Nope, I said Falcon Fury, just like you. Maybe this can lead us to Scooby and Shaggy. Trace amounts of mustache oil, 12-year-old scotch. Ugh, is the bad guy my dad? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.